In Saipan, we got uh, uh, real close to uh, what Walton, you know. We came to one of the little kind of little Shinto, you know, I guess where they kind of uh, have, you know, that they have kind of a church. But there was a little trail there leading up to it. And as we're going up the little trail, uh, I saw some guys were in front of me and I was going by. And when I did I heard him some, and the Japanese just came off of the brush and he came down with a saber. And there was a guy behind me, and he named Walker. And he just walked right behind me, and, he, and the Japanese just came out of there just to hit anybody. And I just had to walk by and hit Walker, and I guess Walker put his hand up to it, and he cut some of his fingers off in the stuck of the guy, the stuck of the rifle. And the guy behind him, boy, he just shot the Japanese right there, because the Japanese fell when he came down, you know, with, with a sword. Came down like that. He he just knew it was over, you know. So he just was going to take somebody with him. And, and also right there, as we were coming up, uh, there were some Japanese that were dead there, you know. And, and this one had a, was laying right on his back, and and had a blood all over him and, and a helmet over his head. And. And I remember this Marine went up there too, and he shot through the helmet. And when he did that, Japanese started sitting up. <laughs> started to sit up. Yeah. That's what that uh, Colonel Chamber used to tell us. He said, if you don't stink, stick it. That's what he would say. <laughs> if you don't stink, stick it. Because he never didn't know they weren't just putting up that they were dead. Yeah. And uh, I, I remember the night just before they was to land next morning, we had a, a big dinner, you know. And I tell them about that. I, I got that turkey drumstick. And I went up in the, in the forecastle of the, of the ship, you know. That's the front end. And sat there out there on the, in the spoon, eating my, eating my turkey leg. <laughs> and I could see them ships, you know. Bombarding, they could see, and you could see the shell. That's how that big it was. When they shot, when they shot the big cruisers, you could hear, it, and then you could see the shell going over and hit, and it would shake the whole thing, you know. I thought, well, there's not gonna be nothing left of that island. They were there bombing that thing, you know. And they got, and then the next morning, when it got ready to to land, well, they still were shooting in there. And then planes were coming over too and dropping bombs, you know, dropping bombs. And, but they were not getting any fire from the island at all. They were not no kind of fire from the island. And and so they got prepared to go in, you know. But by that time, you know, I had been landings before, you know, and I was kind of helping out some of my some of my crews because by that time I I think I was a buck sergeant or something. I had some men, you know, and I could see the ones that never been never, never been in a, in a landing before, you know. And I tried to try to talk to them to uh, replace me, you know, and try to tell them, you know. I said, oh, it's not going to be nothing left. I said they're bombing that heck of that. I said it won't be not it won't be that bad. And I tried to try to calm them, you know. And then we got. 
rendezvousing up there just kind of we're just waiting, you know. They're going round and round and rendezvousing, you know. And on the, on the, uh, uh, we were on alligators there. Not his, well, alligator was tracked, you know. And, and we just kept us uh, going round and round. And, and then they said, okay. And then they gave a signal to go in, you know. So we hit, and we we go on the extreme right. That's where we were. Our our company was extreme right, and and, and as we went in on them tracks, we got into the sand, and and we got up and we just got so far in and just just kind of going to that we couldn't go no more. So we had to just get side by side, you know. That's, that's the way you done on this. You just went off to the side, you know. Went off the side of the track, and went down, and and then and then, and then we could tell as we walked into the water, and then it was kind of soft, you know. And we went through that, you know, like that, and we got up there, and, and at first, and, and much we, not getting there, been less less than less than five minutes or whatever after we did the population, when the motor started, and that's when they started shooting the motor. And they, and they even shooting the motors to the to the landing craft too. Besides, I huh? sent it to the landing craft, and so we landed them in this when they started landing the motor. And then the thing about it was, uh, especially the ones that they've been in before, they just froze because the motors would dig, were hit, you know, hit, and just dig kind of a hole, you know, and they just jump in there. And they meet two or three guys jumping there in the hole, and then pretty soon, and then now they come out and kill the whole bunch. And you cannot get them, you know, because they were never have been, and they just kind of just froze. But in my mind, I could say that, I said, they're just shelling this part of it. I said, but the, the, the side is not. And, and I tell them, I said, let's move out, come in with me, come on. But they wouldn't do it. And then that David Captain Witherspoon, he was a big gun ho guy before we went in. I guess he never had been one. He just, when he got then he froze, he got hit right there. And then some of the other captains too, some of the other officers, you know, they started moving out, you know, uh, trying to get him to move out. And uh, well, the thing I did, you, you can move out. I've told you, I, I don't know if I ever, on that story, where, where, where I, I heard the shell coming. I, I heard the shells that were coming, you know, and I heard that one, and I saw, well, this is, it's all going to land on me, because I could hear. And I heard a thud, and I said, oh, I said, and I kind of looked around, and that thing was about that far from a hill, just to finish, just to finish right there. And that's when I saw, oh, I'm not going to stay here. I, I moved out because I couldn't get him. I, I kept telling him, I said, come on, move out, follow me. But no, I couldn't get And I went over, and I got a line of fire, and I remember I, because I, if you went up there and looked over the ridge, they had the machine guns beside the morning, the machine guns. The minute they went from one bank to the other, and then they had machine. But I went up there, and I was on the side, and there was a hole there, and I got up there, hold up. And these guys were setting up a machine gun, they were down there always. And I got up to shoot them, and nothing happened. I think that they weren't one shoot, it got full of sand. It was full of sand. And I remember I laid down on my back, and I took off my dungaree, and I got out my knife, and I I tore off my, my undershirt, and I laid it out there. And and laid all my parts in, on top of that thing, try to clean it up. I try to clean it up as quick as I can, and I try to clean it up. Finally, I thought I was got to clean up. I put everything in my bag, cause we were taught that to be able to do that quickly. And I cleaned it. I got up, and I got to shoot, but they had already moved back. And the guys had already machine gunners that were there, shooting. They had already retreated. Yeah. But I could have stopped a bunch of guys getting killed if I had been able to shoot that gun. Uh, my horse, just, and just uh, that same one, just got full of sand. Uh, it's bad. 
I finally just went back to him because I was over there by myself. I finally went, went to the cruise, you know. A lot of guys I never could find, you know, man, it's terrible. You know. When you went back to the beach, mm -hmm. can you describe what did you see? Oh, man, I could see terrible things, man. Some place it would just, you could just see the hole and you could just see part of the intestines or part of something there. The rest of them, you couldn't find where the body was. It was terrible. And then some of the guys were trying, still done that, uh, trying to protect in some of them holes. I told them, I said, uh, we got to get out of here. I said, they're going to be moving. But they finally stopped the shredding, you know. They might. But I remember when I was over there, uh, I coming back to them, there was a LSM came with some, uh, 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 kind of a tractor, kind of tractor tank, kind of a half bread small tank, and they unloaded, and they kind of tried to come into the beach, and they just dug into the sand, and they was going around and around, and they were one of them got hit right there. They got hit right there, them tanks. With a mortar? A uh, mortar. Because they were just out there going around and around, and them tracks wouldn't go nowhere at all. On the sand, on the sand and the way it was, you know. And, and and then you're sitting there moving, just going around and around. And them guys up there, see they had spoilers, spiders up on the top of the hill. And they could tell them motors, you know, by what, by what degree they used to show. And they did. And they got every one of them tanks. Three tanks and they got them right there. And I could see them, they were doing that from where I was over there. You know. Yeah. When the tanks would get hit with the mortar, I mean, what did that actually look like? Well, it was terrible. Or oh, you couldn't see the guys come out of there at all because once they get tank hit, I mean, there's ain't no way they can just just get up. I never saw one get up. You might be, you're you're able to release some and come out of the bottom, but if it's just too hard, uh, the concussion of the shell, you know, you just kind of kind of get you. But they stopped every one of them tanks. I don't know. I don't know what happened because we moved out finally, you know, more out of that, lot of them backs, you know, got over the beach finally after all, you know, and it was over to get on to the other side at the top. I really appreciate your description mm -hmm. of, of the landing, sir. My understanding of Iwo Jima, you know, the Japanese. They waited for the 4th and the 5th Marine Division men mm -hmm. to come ashore yeah. and to pack the beach. Yeah. And it was only after you guys packed it, that's when they opened up with everything. Yeah. And they had everything, you know, already spotted yeah. Yeah. and marked. Yeah. And so you didn't take any fire until you actually hit the beach. Right? Yeah, I saw it. Yeah, I saw it. We didn't hit any fire until after we hit the beach. That's where the motors first start coming down. And from your from your memory, was it mostly mortar? Was there any larger shells or no, no, just mortars, but machine guns. Eh? The guys that 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 brave the mortars, you know, they try to go over, but them guys, like I tell you, they were sitting, they were shooting right on top of that ledge, because you go from one ledge like this, and go up, and then another ledge like that, and I can't see, you know, to go up, you know. No, it wasn't just one big deal like that, you know, like 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 the bank where we, and not just go over to the bank. You went so far, and then kind of like a little edge something, and then a little bit more like that. And so that's it was hard to get from this to this one and then to the other one, yeah, yeah. And 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 then uh, the track it, I mean, it was it was just that hard, I mean, to get. Uh, uh, and, and could you please talk a little bit about the noise? How uh, deafening was it to have all these explosions going oh, off? You know, uh, I guess I was used to it. You know, it didn't bother me. I, but I knew in my mind that that the motors were set, you know, for a certain area, and I could see to my right, and I couldn't see no shells over there, you know. So that's what I was trying, I was trying to say, get, get, get out of the, where, where the fire was going on. They, I guess they, they had uh, 
they know where the units were and that's where they had the mortar set up for. Yeah. Yeah. And so after you saw those three tanks getting yeah. blown up, yeah. what happens to you all? I, I, I never did go down there anymore. I could just see them from where I was because there was more traffic in there beside the tank, you know, more people coming in too, you know. And they were, they were evacuating and as much as they could. They were evacuating too, uh, wounded. And, and and the ones that they could help, they were evacuating, you know. If they were dead, then they were just waiting to wait, you know. But if they were wounded, they would evacuate them right away and try to get in. He was, a, he was a man. I never did stay around to find out, you know. I never did look back on that much, but I do remember them tanks that were going down. And, and so, can you please take us through that first day? How do you guys get inland? Yeah, we finally was able to get to the top, and we kind of got it organized a little bit. But like I say, most of our officers were gone, so there's nobody to really tell us exactly what, what's what, you know. And the platoons were kind of just didn't have no captains, you know. Our captains were gone, and and it was a a uh, listed man or a or a, or staff, you know, that they they're not, they're not officers, you know, and they're trying to get together the platoons and and, and get them squared away, and 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 the first first time we had we had to dig in because we didn't know if they were going to come in into it that night or whatever, you know, like they did in uh, in Dinan. We didn't know, so we just prepared for it once we got on top, but there was not not that much uh, space, you know, to get. But they didn't come in, you know, to us that time. They didn't. And I, they just got themselves uh, uh, in caves, you know, uh, mostly during the day. Cause they, and then they had them flares going up all the time, too, you know, even at night. And, but we never saw much uh, action from them at night, you know. But we could see the action going up on the hill, too. We're going up to Mount Sarabachi, you know. Uh, uh, we could see that. Not that much going up because they didn't have that much to see us, but they had, there was so much. The fifth Marines were going up there. You, uh, you know, you were a platoon sergeant huh? and all your officers have been killed. Huh? That means you have a, a lot of responsibility. You, you are now really in charge. Well, I... Uh, I actually wasn't there, platoon sergeant yet, when I landed there. No, there was a the one that was a platoon sergeant was Lindenmuth. Lindenmuth. Uh, he was from there where the Marines started the tavern there, the whatever the there in the East Coast. That's where he's from, Lindenmuth. Anyway, he was a heck of a guy. He's a brave son of a bitch. Anyway, uh, he was a uh, later on. Before I before I took over the platoon, at that time he was he was the one that was a platoon sergeant, and and I remember the day he got shot. We we been there maybe a, a day or two, and when he got killed, he, no he didn't get killed he just got wounded, but they came back and told me, he said Linda was got wounded and they bringing him back so he came back, and as he came back with me. He said, Marty, you better, you got to take over. He said, you got to take over. Uh, so I, I said, okay. So I went up in front and he said, well, Linda Mook, I said, I said, well, we got to we get our squads, you know, to get together, find out what's going to go, what's going to happen. So that's when I first started having to deal with the platoon, you know, yeah, after he got wounded, yeah. yeah. What's that responsibility like? Well, it's kind of rough, you know. Because you got to go around, you know, there ain't no way in there, you just can just sit, you know. You can't just sit there, you know. You got to move around. But uh, I just had a feeling that that I was going to make it. And when you have that feeling, you know, I never did feel like I'm going to get killed. I never did. I just felt I'm going to make it and I'm going to do it. And I took a chance this lot of time, you know, that I thought, you know, I'm not going to get hit. I took a lot of chances. Uh, uh, I don't know if I told you this, but I told that other guy that uh, interviewed me. 
about what happened to me there with uh, one of the times it was kind of rainy, you know, that that day, and and we tried to dig in, and for the night because it's going to be flares, you know, and it had been kind of a little mist. And we come a little mist at night, you know, and you got a little, and I remember it's got some ha uh, rocks there, and there was a couple of boulders, and I got in between them boulders, and we hadn't slept for quite a couple of nights, you know. And we got in that between them boulders, and I and I had my gun on top of me like the laying, laying the boulders. And the, and the flare, the flare went up, and and I looked up there, and there was a Japanese standing on top, and I could see his eyes, uh, glasses, and he, he just froze standing, you know? and I was laying there like that. I was laying out there. I just didn't move. I was just tired, and when I went out, he, he took off. And then I had somebody shoot, somebody shot him down there. But he stopped right over me, he never did look down. <laughs> I, was, <laughs> I was in between that rock yeah. And I didn't even move, I just sat there. <laughs> and, uh, oh, a lot of, lot of stuff. And like a lot of times, I was so happy, things, things that happened, you know. And I never could tell. Just like I say, they were meant for me, and then and, and they didn't. I know. I, I we had we had this guy. He was supposed to be a kind of like a, a sniper, you know. He was shooting. He was shooting a. He was shooting a thirty out six. That was them one. A thirty out six. You know, supposed to be pretty good, pretty powerful, and pretty pretty good for shooting. You know. 30 out six gun. So we're sitting there before we went down that last draw that we went down, one of the times before we went down that draw, you know, to come out. And, and he said, I said, because uh, we had been trying to go down and men get hit every time. Every time we start down with men, we didn't, couldn't see them. We didn't, never could see them. So he said, let's sneak up there, he said, up there to that ledge. Let's sneak up there and see if we can see them suckers. He said, you want to come? I said, I want to go with you. So we went, kind of crept up there. We got close to the edge, and we saw this one Jap down there standing up there by the rock, and he shot. But the guy didn't fall. He just kind of went back in the cave. And about that time, I heard the shooting, and I felt the heat. I felt the heat, and I smelled the powder. I, but to this day, I smell hot and the powder, and how close it came to my eye. <laughs> they spotted me, and then the other side of that, that day too, name, name is Cheater, name was Cheetah. We were climbing there that last day, before I went in, in that, for that cave. We were climbing there, and, and all of a sudden, we were climbing about that far then. Heard a shot moving, looking over me, and he got shot right in the floor. So I knew there was one right there real close, you know. So right away I took up shot that way, you know. And I went out there and I slid around and came around. And I came out behind the Japanese, and he was sitting there looking through the brush, you know, to see what. And I just shot offhand like that. But I shot him right in the head, you know. And, then, and even then, with his head blown up, he had a grenade in his hand, and he was trying to detonate that grenade in his boot. Even then, with his head blown off, he was still trying to do that. I remember to this day. I remember to, oh, things like that happened. He just happened to be the other guy around. Yeah. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, but yeah. the, this is the same day that you the you got the silver star. Yeah. So if if you don't mind, if you could please continue with that story. So after you knock out that one Japanese soldier, what happens? But that's kind of that's kind of the beginning of that, because then I knew that they were pretty close, and as I as I as I come out of there, uh, and try to come back where the guys were. Because this guy had got shooting right by me, 
And I came back around. As I came back, there was a boulder, about about from here to the door, like that, everybody, kind of kind of flat like that. And I came on this side of the boulder, and and when I when I looked over, a, a Japanese on the other side peeked over too, you know. We, we both were looking at each other, but same. But the heck of it is, he he shot first, and I guess he just shot, and we did. And then he went down, and I knew that he had gone down. So then I thought, well, I'll, uh, he's not there anymore. So I kind of just crawled up there and looked, and I saw him going down, and that's when I saw him going over to the cave, you know. I, I saw him going over. And, and that's different than the way they had it rolled, rolled up. Because then when I saw where he went, and I saw, well, he went in that cave. And I went back, I said, I can't go in there with just name one. I don't know how many people are there. So I went back in there and I, and I told him his name was Kick. I said, Kick, let me have your machine, your BAR. And I didn't tell him what I was going to do or nothing. I just got the BAR. Because uh, I kind of thought that that would be the last day there, you know. If we could get down to the beach, you know, uh, we, we would be home. Anyway, I. I got that BAR, and I kind of went down and followed the, the way he had gone, you know. And I kind of went in there real close, but I couldn't see that that much in there. So I just walked right on in, and I could see a lot of eyes, you know, looking at me. So I just sprayed the whole thing. So I just, the minute I, the minute I got in front of the cave, I just swept the whole thing with 20 rounds, you know, and left and come back. And I just, I didn't try to count or whatever. I just shut the whole thing and went back to where the guys were. And while we were there, I had brought a, I had uh, got a, a replacement that morning. It came, he had been, just got off a ship and replaced them, sent them up. Why they sent them up there that day when they kind of figured it was going to be the last day, I never could figure that out. So he came up there. And I told them, I said, you know what? I said, I told them, there's a Japanese shop right there. I said, well, we can, we can spot him. He said, I want you to get him behind this thing right here. I said, but I, I be careful. I said, don't peek up around anything because them suckers know where we're at. I knew he was just new, you know, he just did wrong. I said, don't expose yourself. I said, don't expose yourself. I said, because we don't know where they're at up there. I said, just sit there behind here, and and and, and we're going to move out. I said, pretty soon, and when we do move out, we'll see what what's going to happen. So I went back and told the guys. I said, where are we going to charge? We're going to get out of here. I said, I want you all to follow me when we go, and we're going to go. And I said, but I'm going to. I got a replacement here. I got to tell them where we're going to be. I went over to get him, and he had been shot. He had been he had been killed, and and a guy. So I, I I was used to them guys hiding, them Japanese. So I got down there and I looked to the other side. It wasn't too far. It was a kind of like a little ledge, a ledge up on top, and there was a little. Cliff. And I looked and I could see something that was not natural. Not natural, and I went back again to the guys. And I told them, I said, load up that bazooka for me. This guy, they carried the bazooka. I said, load up that bazooka for me. So he did, he loaded up the bazooka. And I came up there with a, that replacement had been shot. And I looked and I said, that's not natural. And I shot, I shot into that eye. And I said, oh, well, there's something in there. I said, I said, I know, I didn't go down there to check. I just showed him. But I could tell there might have been somebody there. So I told the guys, so I went back to that, okay, let's move out. I said, let's, let's go down, there's hell, hell high water, we're going now. I said, when we get to the beach, we're home. He said, we're going to my ship. Just follow me and we'll go. So I took off and I said, come on. And so they did, we started going down. And I went by where I had hit that with a bazooka. And sure enough, there's a Japanese right there. He had been right there. He had a saber. As I went by, I saw he had a saber. And he had one of our guns, 45. 
and he had a few trees he ate one of his days. I said, I saw I went by. I didn't say a thing, I just kept going, you know. Get going, and we went down, and uh, uh, and the guy just followed me. And as we were going down, I looked, I saw a flash, I saw out there, but it was a guy over with a camera. Up in the ledge up there, I could see he had a camera, and it was, it was, they was taking pictures of us as we were going down. He was sitting up on top up there. See, that was clear up here on that side. He was just like going down that ravine. Anyway. So we got, we got down there to the to the end of the ravine, the bottom of it. And I said, okay, I said, we're gonna wait here till we get orders to go aboard ship. So we got down there and we just laid, kind of laid down. And that's the picture that I got there where we were laying down and the, they were laying around me out there. Huh? And we're sitting there. And then, and then uh, the story kind of goes on. While we're sitting there, the tanks come out with the flamethrowers, you know, they throw right, flamethrowers. And they came out and they said, we're looking for uh, Sergeant Martinez. They said, where is Sergeant Martinez? I didn't say nothing. One guy said, that's Sergeant Martinez there. And they pointed to me. And they said, you know, we got a, Sergeant Martinez got, is going to show us them caves that are up there that we're going to go blast and put flamethrowers on them with tanks. Put flamethrowers and get them caves. He said, Sergeant Martinez, I said my last order was, I said, when I got here, I said, I'm going aboard ship. I said, you got to get somebody else to take you up there. I'm not going. <laughs> so I, I didn't go back up there. Yeah. We didn't mention it in this interview, but I read previously that you were ordered to go to that meat grinder, which yeah. which is where all the Japanese were hit out. And yeah. if you made it through, yeah. if you made it to the beach, yeah. then you were you were done. I was done. I and, was done. And you did exactly what you were told, plus some. Yeah. I. Uh, it, it, I. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's incredible. Uh -huh. yeah. What who you know what you've done. And, uh -huh. and what you've gone through, uh -huh. sir. Uh -huh. um, I just have a couple questions, if that's okay. Yeah, I don't know about. And, and then and then we'll wrap up for for Iwo Jima. The story about the the replacement who was killed. Uh -huh. What made you realize uh, something was out of place when you were looking for that Japanese soldier? Uh -huh. Was it camouflage or what was it? It's just a camouflage. I was used to, uh, I guess I'd done a lot of hunting, you know, when I was young. And I knew the, the camouflage from the real. And, and also on them islands. I've been on them islands and I could tell when, when they got some of the brush that didn't belong, you know. It's just something that don't, you know, that don't belong there. It's just different than what else is around, you know. I just, I just, and the, that's the only thing that was across that they, they could have had a vision of him, you know, yeah. They could have had a vision of that. Right? But I sure always hated that that poor guy just came into the island to get killed. Send him, why did they send me a replacement up there? To this day, I never can realize that. And, th and there was another question. So you gave us the account of how you got the BAR, and you go back to that cave uh -huh. that you saw that one Japanese soldier run yeah, into. Yeah. How did you approach the cave so that they wouldn't fire at you? Yeah. Well, I, I didn't go straight into it, right? face right to it. I kind of went to the side, you know, where they weren't looking out at me. But I saw him, you know? but I didn't go straight in the way he did. I went to the side of it and then just slipped right on in. And I, and I knew there had to be some more in there. And when I did, I, I just opened up right away on, on the BR. But I could see, I could see uh, kind of dark, but I could see their eyes, you know. Because a lot of them wear glasses a lot, and they, they, they could kind of tell, you know. But uh, I just swept the whole, with the 20 rounds, I just swept the whole thing and unloaded the whole, the whole magazine, yeah, to the, 
So I didn't know if there's any, how many beside him or how many more that I could see. I, I probably couldn't see probably more than two or three, you know, really, because it was kind of dark in there, like that. But I could tell there was more people in there, yeah. I could tell there was more in there. And, and how deep in the cave did you actually get? Not that far then. No, just to just the dive No, I, did, I didn't go in the cave in the, in the depth at all. I just went to the face of it, and right there I could see him. The cave wasn't that deep. It was a deep, a deep area cave that did you, like the other ones that they went on, like, it was kind of just like a, a cave thing into the side of the, into the side of the bank of the thing, you know. I, I don't think, I didn't, I never did go back to see. I don't know if it was, it was a continuous to it or not. Just to be honest with you, you I, I could be wrong that they could have been a continuous thing to it. A lot of them were connected, you know. Some were connected with each other, but I never did get into any of them cases at all. So. Your, your, your citation for the Silver Star, it credits you with 15. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's what they said. I never did. I had no idea. They were asking me about it. I said, I never did stop to count. I had no idea at all. I, I could, to me, it could have been just three or four or whatever, you know. I, uh, but I knew I, I swept the whole thing with a with a gun. But, but but is it also plausible, in your opinion, that there could have been 15 in there? Oh, no. It could I mean, I, I knew there was a lot, but I didn't think it was that many. Just to be honest with you, uh, I didn't think it would be that many. And, and I know this is a silly question, but... You, you, you you were almost at the end of the campaign. Yeah. No one wants to be the last guy killed in a battle. I uh, know. You saw that Japanese soldier run in the cave. You could have just gone back to your outfit. Uh, you could have let someone else worry about it. Uh, why yeah. did you Why did you risk your life? I mean, because you know you could have been killed. Oh, uh, and I I just figured that he had somebody there that he was going to, you know. Uh, and, and the things that you kind of just go by instinct, you know, that you begin to suspect or know, and, and kind of the way they, uh, they move or act or whatever, you know. And any kind of movement gives you an idea of something, if you're looking for it, you know. And, and you, le you learn to do it, you know. And, and I just figured, you know, when he came in there, and and shot shot the rifle and he didn't even point. He just came up and saw each other. He just shot, you know, and went down. But I I, I didn't I didn't try to do that. I just kind of waited, and then I creeped up there and then I saw him walking over to the cave and went in. But I said I couldn't go in there with an M1. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, just for clarification, you, you told us the other story about firing the bazooka. Uh -huh, yeah. uh, and as you walked by on your way to the beach, yeah. you saw that samurai sword. Yeah, yeah. Did, did you pick it up? Uh, did I? I didn't find it tell you the story while I go. Uh, no, I didn't. I saw it there, and I saw hey, one of our guns. And he showed a B-28 and I think a bayonet, two beside the sword. I didn't pick it up, I just saw it. I didn't see nothing. And I went down, and when we were sitting over there, and I didn't finish telling the story, when we were down there, we were sitting over there, and this guy was from Texas. I could not remember, he was a, kind of a happy-go-lucky guy. I told him, say, I, ne I had never picked up a thing. I had never had picked up. I never had touched a Japanese after he got dead or went through him, his pocket or doing nothing. I never did. I, I cannot remember this guy texting. I said, I said, I, I, I know where I can get you a P-38. That was a Japanese gun. I said, I, I can get you a Japanese P-38 if you want to go with me up there where we came from. He said, yeah. He said, okay. <laughs> I said, well, let's go. <laughs> So we went up there, and I went up there, and uh, I got the sword, and I got one of them from 45 that they had taken, he had taken off of a dead Marine, 
And I, and I got a hymn, the P38, but the saber had a dog leg on it from the, from the blast, and half of the scabbard was gone, blown off half of it, just a handle, and the dog leg on the blade, you know, from from the blast. But I picked it up and and uh, bayonet, and and we came down. <laughs> I came down with all that stuff. And so I went aboard ship with all that stuff, because uh, they said you couldn't, couldn't take nothing aboard ship. So I, I did have that, all that stuff, you know. And, uh, but I was going to tell you about that bayonet. Uh, we was up kind of far north, you know, and we hadn't changed socks, I guess, on the mountain. And it was, oh, we had a dungaree jacket, and it was, got cold. Man, we couldn't go up top side of the like that. So I thought, well, I'll go down there where the Navy is. And they give me some clothes, and I took their bayonet with me. And I went down there, and I saw them, they were chipping on the, on the guns. They call them chipping guns, you know, getting the paint. And I went off and I said, hey, I said, I got a bayonet. I said, somebody got a, a some sweaters and socks and and skivvies. Yeah, I do. Everybody want to jump. Yeah, we, we get, this guy doing it. He said, what do you want? I went, I want some sweaters, I said, and some socks and changes. He said, yeah, come on. And so we went down. And he got me a turtleneck sweater and a regular sweater and some socks and skivvies. And I gave him the bayonet. <laughs> I gave him the bayonet. Yeah. Uh, there was some something, something there. I did go back up there and got that sir. Uh, and then that sword, I, one of my nephews got in. I had another nephew that took shop there in Clayton, and he took that and straightened that thing up. Of course, it didn't have the scabbard, you know, but he straightened that dog leg on that thing and got just as straight as could be. He done it. He 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 was. He took shop, you know, and he knew he knew how to do it. He straightened it up. Is yeah. it still in the family? Yeah, one of my nephews got it. Wow. I guess, but it don't have no scabbard or nothing, just a saber. And a story. Bill Hudson. Oh, sit here, sir. If you if you just lift up your foot, I'll, I'll get that. There you go. Oh, Bill Hudson. So so Bill Hudson was one of your men. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And he wrote a book, uh -huh. and in his book, he says, Manuel Martinez was the bravest, most courageous person I have ever known. Oh, gosh. A yeah. true hero and a patriot. Oh. I mean, this isn't a family member. This isn't, a, a, you know, a, this is someone uh -huh. who served under you, uh -huh. who, who could have said whatever he wanted. But, uh -huh. I mean, he means that. Uh -huh. Can you talk a little bit about mm -hmm. what what was your strategy to being a good leader, to being a leader that people respected and followed? Uh, I I think you gotta sit by example more than anything else. That's about the same. Uh, that's what I the way I figure, you know. On if 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 you tell somebody to do something and you're not apt to do it yourself, I mean, don't ever tell them. Don't ever depend on them to do something if you don't have to do it yourself. Yeah? That's the way I always felt, you know. I, I, or I won't tell somebody to change something unless I know that I'm, I'm right on it, perfectly right, you know. Yeah. 